Okay, so in today's math lesson, uh, it was all about factoring expressions. Uh, in essence, taking a look at an expression and finding out if I, there is a common factor within the expression that I can take essentially out of the expression as a multiplication problem uh, or as a, uh, as a multiplier or a multiplicative value. So if I'm looking at 7 times x and I'm looking at 7 times y, okay, I'm going to set this up as a distributive property, okay, is there a factor I can remove a factor out of these two expressions? And the answer for this one is 7. And now if I factor 7 out, I'm left with 1 here and 1 here, okay? So here's my factoring out my 7 as a multiplication problem, because in essence I have 7 x's, Right, and I have 7 y's. So if I factor out that 7, that's kind of like saying, or it's exactly like saying, I'm going to have 7 groups of x plus y. Here are my 7 x's plus here are my 7 y's. Okay? And in order to achieve that, I found the common factor, or greatest common factor, within those two situations, or within those two expressions, and that factor was 7. So if I factor it out that 7, I put it here on the left, and then I, what I'm doing is I'm saying that I now need 7 groups of x plus y, instead of saying I have 7 x's plus I have 7 y's. Okay? Now moving along with some other examples here. doesn't always work so well with, all, with every expression, with every problem. Here's 15 g's, or 15 sets of g, plus... 20 h's, or 20 times h. Now here, I can factor out a value, but that value isn't 15, and it's not 20. I can't fa factor out 15 from both of them, and I can't factor out 20 from both of them. But if I know anything about my factors, I do realize that 5 is a common factor between the two of them. Okay, So if I factor out a 5 from 15, I'm left with 3. If I factor out a 5 from 20, I'm left with 4. So in essence, I'm saying to myself, I need five groups of 3 times g, or 3 g's, plus, and I need five groups of 4 h's. Now, if I want to check my work and, and redistribute that 5, or factor that 5 back in, I can say, hey, if I have five groups of 3 g's, that would certainly give me 15 g's. 5 times 3 gives me 15, or 5 times 3 g gives me 15 g, and 5 times 4 h would give me 20 h. Okay, next one. I'll change colors, why not? So this guy over here, I have 18m plus 42n. Now here, I can factor out, let's see, uh, 6. I realize that 18 and 42 have a greatest common factor of 6. So I'm going to take that 6, pull it out, put it on the outside, of an addition problem here. Now if I factor out that 6 from 18, I'm left with 3. And if I factor out that 6 from 42, I'm left with 7. There's my 3, there's that 7. And there you have it. Okay? And once again, if I want to check things out, I want to redistribute that 6 back in just to see if I made a mistake. I realize that 6 times 3m gives me 18. There you go. And 6 times uh, 7n certainly gives me 42n. All right. Now, in the next guy, uh, very similar. So let's cruise down to E for a minute here. E is an interesting one. Because with E, I'm not factoring out a number. I'm factoring out a value. Uh, excuse me, a variable. Now, remember, a variable represents, uh, represents a number, some number, whatever it is. And since I have the same variable, that means it's the same number. Therefore, I can factor out that f. Right, so it's the f I'm going to factor out this time, and I'm left with 11 plus 15. Right, if I want to check things back and uh, put that factor that f back in, so f times 11 gives me 11f, yeah, and f times 15 gives me 15f. And I'm good to go. Okay. And the only other one I'm going to work on today is this deal with this one. This let's see, uh, which is really g down here. So let's see, 55. M, you just have to realize that 
said, hey, okay, I'm factoring out an 11. There it is. Now, if I factor out an 11 from 55, I'm left with 5. In this case, 5m. Plus, now here's the thing. I'm not going to be left with 0 here. If I factor out an 11 from 11, I'm actually left with 1. A couple of reasons why. 1, 11 divided, uh, first of all, 11 divided by 11 gives me 1. <clears throat> and the two factors that give me 11 in a multiplication problem would be 11 and 1, not 11 times 0. Because 11 times 0 would give me 0. If I were to put a 0 here, and I tried to redistribute that 11, I would have a big problem. That 11 times 5m certainly would give me that 55m, but 11 times 0 would give me 0. I don't have 0 here. I have 11. Therefore, I know that this has to be a 1. Because 11 times 1 gives me 11. And I'm right back where I started from. Okay. Now, when it comes to evaluating expressions, if someone were to give you, um, let's say, a, um, a value for each of these variables, let's use 2 and 3, so let's see, let's take that 7x plus that 7y, I could certainly substitute, and there we go, and over here I'll have 14 plus 7 times 3, and here's another, oh, excuse me, here's a 21, plus a 14, and I'd wind up with a 35, like this, and on the other hand here, if I pulled that 7 out, or factored out that 7, and I'm a big fan of what's going on on the right side, because it just seems to be a little bit easier, fewer steps, so here's my 2 plus my 3, and there's my 5, okay, times my 7, and there is my 35, just like that, okay, and that kind of proves that everything's working out the way it should, all right, well, that's all, folks. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.